would like you to introduce yourself. Okay. Um, my name is Peter Brown. I am the owner and manager of Care Resort Chiang Mai, which was nominated as the best care resort in the world in 2016, which we're very proud of. Um, I first came to Thailand for early in the 2000s, but I have been coming regularly to Thailand since uh, about 2004, and then I moved to Thailand in 2007 when I bought this resort. At the time it was bankrupt, and we spent a year rebuilding and refurbishing, then we opened a four-star resort for tourists. Meanwhile my mother was in a care facility in England and every year the care went down and down till it was no good. I looked elsewhere but everywhere, everywhere else had the same problem. So my wife and I decided we could do a better job with a different philosophy. So four years ago we set about opening a care facility here. Uh, your mother was there in a government facility or was it a private uh, home there? It was the second biggest care home company in the UK and the care level was still terrible. Mm. Uh, but that's common in the West mm. because it costs money to employ carers mm. and money is the main objective in the West mm. so they don't employ carers too much. Unfortunately, what people need is care, and what care needs is carers. So if you don't have the carers, you can't give the care. If you don't give the care, you don't improve people's lives. So it's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. So here, yeah, from whatever I read and I saw that clip you had sent on Discovery Channel, you have sent. Uh, you have the elderly who are living here, and some of them are also living with dementia or Alzheimer's disease? Yeah, so just over half our guests have got some form of dementia. How many guests are here uh, in your facility right now? 25. Okay. And out of them around 12 are of dementia? 12, 13 got dementia. Some very bad, some not so bad. And, and what is the age uh, What is the age range of the youngest and the oldest? Uh, I think the youngest is about 63 and the oldest is 97. And my mother's here and she's uh -huh. 94. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the one who's 97 is from where? Which country? He's from the UK mm -hmm. but he's lived in Chiang Mai since 1953. Okay. So uh, like most of the residents are there those who have been living in Chiang Mai for long or are they... No, most come here from abroad. From abroad. From abroad. 50 more than 50% come from the USA. Mm. Second largest mm. number come from the UK. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, Asia? Asia? Asia. We have a few from, few, few from Asia. Mm. Uh, we have five, five with Asian ethnicity. But three of those are U.S. citizens. Oh. And is there an age bar for uh, any person to come and live here? You have put some age bar, sixty years. Uh, no, no age bar at no all. Age. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> so anybody who wants to. Yeah, and people come here. Some people come here to die. So. Uh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And who's, the, who's been the longest living resident here? Somebody who's going from. Inception and... Uh, yeah, her name is Marion, she comes from the UK, she's been here for... since we opened three and a half years ago. Okay, she's been here. Yeah. Okay. And how many, how many staff, how many people you have on the staff? Yeah. Total staff I have 82. Mm -hmm. Nursing staff I have 29. Mm -hmm. So I have 25 guests, 29 nursing staff. Okay. You compare that to where my mother was in the UK, mm. 40 guests, 4 nursing staff. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now believe me the difference is huge. Mm. Mm. On average in the USA I think it's 1 nursing staff, 10 guests. If it's very good, 1 nursing staff, 5 guests. Mm. But as you cut the nursing staff down, you cut what you can do down. 
So if one of my guests wants to go for a one hour walk around the grounds, then a carer will go with her, holding her arm, walking for one hour. If you haven't got the staff, you can't do that. Even, I have dementia guests here with 24 hour care. That means 24 hours a day, there's a carer within a few meters of them, all the time. They still go shopping every week on a shopping trip. But that means I have to send one carer to one guest. If you haven't got the staff, you can't do that. If you can't do that, you change people's lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So all these carers, they are staying on the premises? Are they, or they are About mm -hmm. half stay on the premises. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there is staff or maybe from this time to this time or whatever are they working on? There is staff mm -hmm. on 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. We work three, three, okay. eight, three okay. eight hour shifts. Okay, three eight hours. Yeah. So in, in one shift, how many are there? In the daytime shifts, about 10. Hmm. In the night shift, it's less. Hmm. And this is uh, separate from, you have your own resort which is run separately? The no, I have my own resort which is run together. Which is run together? Yeah, okay. run together. Okay. But the resort size diminishing, the care size, size growing. Okay. Uh, we, had, we w had decided a year ago we were going to close the resort. Mm -hmm soon as care got to break even stage we would close the resort we reached break even in december but we decided not to close the resort because having the resort is so popular with the care guests it creates a different ambiance it yes, yes. doesn't make it look like it's an yeah, old yeah, person's right, place right, yeah. um, so even even elderly people prefer to see some young people around yes. and children playing and yes. things like that plus meeting people every week from different countries so so they enjoy it it's more like them staying in the mainstream not, yes. not away from yes. um, others yes. yeah yes. it is it's really important uh, another thing maybe it's a personal question but cost wise and like, like you said here is there's more than one care per person given the ratio yeah and elsewhere in the uk and us it is just the means even there and forget about other countries in the world and I should not even talk of India <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's no uh, concept of home uh, these uh, such uh, care homes uh, how does the cost compare here with US or UK compared to the US between 10% and 20% of the US cost mm. so I had a guest move from here and I think her costs went up eight, eightfold back in the US. But it depends what you get in the US. But it's not just about costs, it's about care levels. So here you're getting a cheaper product than the UK and the US. But more importantly, it's more important if you can afford it, you've got the high level of care. Because we focus on two key philosophies. One is there'll always be enough care none of my guests will ever complain there's not enough care and the second philosophy we have is we believe in personal freedom maintaining dignity so we let our guests live as much their own life as possible so they can choose when to eat what to eat when to go to sleep where to eat what activities to do what activities not to do whether they want to go on a trip whether they don't want to go on a trip I believe in letting people live their own lives with help. I tell my carers, you're here to look after people's health, but equally as important, you must look after their dignity. Um, what usually happens in a lot of uh, nursing home type care places around the world is they're nearly prisoners. They are told what they're going to eat, when they're going to eat, they're told when they're going to go to sleep, they're not allowed out. <laughs> They can't do this, they can't do that. And in some places in the US and Canada, they will even split a husband and wife up because one's on a different care level than the other. Now, I personally think that's inhumane and pointless. Perhaps they think it saves money, but uh, I don't believe it does because you split a husband and wife up and maybe been married 30 years. The chances of uh, their health's going to diminish, not, not improve, because they've got other strains to go along. So a lot of the care around the world is just not good enough. Uh, and it's not going to get any better because we have a growing elderly population in nearly every country in the world. Uh, 
So the cost of the elderly is going to cost more. So to ask people to spend more when the numbers are rising is a forlorn hope. It's not going to happen. Do you have any couples uh, living here? Yeah, we have couples living here. At first we didn't. At first it was nearly all singles and nearly all female. Female? Yeah, okay. because the people that suffer most when made single tends to be the wife. Mm. Quite often in the generation we're talking about, the man is the dominant decision maker. Decides about money, decides about this. Suddenly the wife left on her own. She doesn't want to find another man. She's living at home. And then they start to go out less, do less, become unfit. Become unfit, you become unhealthy. And so yeah, females were the predominant. And then we had a spurt of males and now we're having a spurt of couples. Mm -hmm. So it's very strange. But most of my inquiries are now dementia related. When we first started marketing four years ago, mm. about 5% of my inquiries were dementia related. Now it's at least 70% of my inquiries are dementia related. Mm. Probably because of the way people hear about us. Because uh, mm -hmm. uh, we never marketed dementia particularly well. We never marketed in the US and yet the US is our biggest market. So. Mm. Is there any, uh, like, uh, you get more dementia uh, residents, are they female or male or there is no such? Uh, there are more females than males, mm -hmm. which you'd expect because females live longer than mm -hmm. males mm -hmm. uh, and dementia is a disease of, of the elderly. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the reasons we're getting so many dementia sufferers now is because we never had this number of people living this mm -hmm. long. Mm -hmm. But one day they'll find out what causes dementia. And one day they'll find some, something that makes it better. But at the moment, mm -hmm. nothing mm -hmm. makes it better. It, it only gets worse. Or, how, or can it be stalled at some stage? No. Yes. Stage. In my opinion, it can be stalled. Mm -hmm. Most of my guests mm -hmm. are what I would call uh, stable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They're not getting worse. Okay. Some you come and you, you actually within two weeks you can see you're not gonna you're not gonna they're on a slope and they're okay. gonna keep skiing down that mm. slope. Mm. But others mm. uh, you can stall. Mm. Quite a lot in dementia you see people aggressive, depressed. Mm. Um, a lot of that is caused by frustration because when a lot of people get dementia they get treated like children. Mm. And somebody that's lived a complex life. And you've got to remember, most people in the age group we're talking about have lived through the world, world war, if not other problems. They've, they've lived a, a complex life. They've had to be independent at some time in, the, in their life, perhaps because the husband was away fighting a, a war or something. And then to suddenly be treated like a child just because you've got some small disease, it's not nice. Uh, but it's very hard not to treat somebody with dementia like a child because they act childish. But if you treat them like a child, there's a bit of the brain that's still working is that bit that looks after dignity and then they get frustrated and then they get angry and then they get depressed. So from our point of view we try to first of all take away the frustrations, treat them like adults, treat them like human beings, give them a life, give them some choice. Now what they can do is limited compared to somebody that's perfectly fit, but they can still do an awful lot. And I have guests on stage six Alzheimer's, which is very bad, um, but they still go shopping. They still choose what they're going to, to buy. They make decisions whether they're going to buy a pair of sunglasses or go and eat lunch or sit in a coffee shop. Uh, people with memory problems aren't necessarily stupid. They just got memory problems. Yes. So um, there's a lot can be done for dementia and more and more if you read things now more and more people are talking about its lifestyle and diet mm -hmm. that makes dementia mm -hmm. improve. Mm -hmm. It's not the drugs. In fact from where I sit the drugs make it worse. If I have my way I take everybody on dementia drugs off dementia drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, vitamins yes, coconut oil yes, drugs no. Mm. But we're in an age where you go to a doctor and they have to give you a prescription. Mm. It's just part of our lifestyle now. Mm. Uh, but they don't do any good. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to 
give medication to s deal with the symptoms but not to deal with the dementia because you're dealing with something that's not going to get better but people still live 10 20 years with dementia and if they're going to live 10 20 years with dementia well let's try and get them to live 10 20 years and enjoy those 10 20 years that's our simple philosophy so you have some uh tie up with some medical facility in the city where they go for checkups? Yeah, we, I mean, Chiang Mai has got a lot of good international hospitals, mm -hmm. but it's only, in my opinion, got two good mm -hmm. dementia okay. doctors. Two doctors that don't reach for the prescriptions. Uh, doctors that don't look on the computer, let's type in dementia okay. and see what we can <laughs> get and what we can give them. You have to look at the uh, the patient and decide what they want so we some of those doctors work in three hospitals so we will find out what day they're working in what hospital and send them to see that doctor I mean my head nurse has got one the, the best doctor on her phone all the time she's sending in messages every other day uh, to get advice may I know the name of those doctors it, it can help others uh, Dr. Surat is the best one in Chiang Mai but he he works at the university, he lectures, he travels the world, mm. going to seminars, he learns more and he also works at hospitals. Mm. But he probably only works about less than half a week seeing patients, mm. the rest of the time he's professional at the university. But he's very good uh, and it helps have a doctor that's very good. It helps have a doctor that understands. Uh, How do you spell his name? S-U-R-A-T. Okay. The trouble with dementia is nobody knows anything about it. Mm. And the, uh, the other problem with dementia, the biggest problem with dementia is the general population know nothing mm. about it. Mm. And most of the general population that have a relative with dementia, they know nothing about it and don't want to know anything about it. There is something, a mystique about dementia which means, oh, no, I don't want to learn about it. I don't want to know about it. I don't want to know how to treat my mother. I just want it cured. Mm. So some people will go around doctor after doctor trying to get it cured. Uh, but actually, and I tell most of the relatives, the people that have to change most because of dementia is the relative, mm. especially if you live with a relative. You have to change the way you deal with people. You have to look at things through their eyes. But so for instance, my mother will sit in a chair in the afternoon looking out the window. And so I think, you're bored, you've got to do something. Mm. She doesn't want to do something and she's not bored. Mm. Mm. She looks bored Boy, but, but she, she isn't is. bored. So I have to get used to the fact that she wants to sit there, she doesn't want to go out, she doesn't want to go for a cup of coffee, she doesn't want to go on a trip. She's happy doing what she's doing. So that's what I let her do. So yeah, you have to adapt. And when she acts like a child, I can't treat her like she's a child. Uh, but people do act like a child because they've got no memory. So they might order something for breakfast and then when it comes, so you know I don't like eggs. Uh, and you have to say, okay mum, just eat the bacon. Uh, so, and then I'll get you something else. It's, you have to learn how to adapt. But dement unless they find a cure for dementia, Dementia is a significant problem over the next decade. Significant. And, and it is increasing. More yeah. More, more and there is no way to look after someone with dementia properly mm. without staffing. Mm. Mm. And nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that. Yes. So I was about to ask you what, what about families? Say, maybe in my own country, India or elsewhere where uh, people have to deal with a person with dementia at home in the family. Here too, that's Thai culture. Thai culture, mm -hmm. Thai culture mm -hmm. is you sort it out in the family, mm -hmm. you care in the family. Mm -hmm. Singapore, which is quite a rich mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. has a policy on elderly care mm -hmm. all in the family all at home. Mm. Nice easy policy for any government to have because mm. cuts your cost down. Mm. Um, and then the Singapore government say yeah we'll do it in the home and we will assist with care visits. Which is a system that should work mm. as long as you 
assist with the care visits to a good enough level. The problem is the world's changing. So the children might both be working. They might have two children at, at, at school. You've got a mother with dementia. So immediately one of the, one of the parents has got to stop work. Maybe yes. half the income, maybe 60% of the income is now, now coming in. Somebody's got to sort the kids out for school. Looking after a dementia suffering parent is not easy. So the strain in the family builds up. If you're going to have a system that works in the home, government has to support more. Governments have to accept this problem exists, but governments don't like accepting problems exist that they can't afford to solve. So it goes on. But yeah, to my mind, in the home is the best place. Mm -hmm. But it's not always easy. In Thailand, that's always been the way. You look after your parents. Mm -hmm. But suddenly you've got a generation where both parents are working. Yes. Uh, and they want more consumer goods. They want a, a better life. They don't want to suddenly give it up for their parents. Mm -hmm. So the parent staying at home and not being looked after is not a good solution. Mm -hmm. Thailand's got a particular problem with dementia mm. because the poor families can't afford to look after their parents at home. They need to work. Yes. They can't afford to put them into mm. care because the mm. care yes. is too expensive yes. for them. Mm. The rich families can afford to put their parents into care, mm. but you have to understand Thai culture. Mm. In Thai culture, if you're wealthy and you put your parents mm. into care, mm. you yes. are looked down upon. Uh, yeah, it's so it's not acceptable. It's not an acceptable thing to do. So they have to look at them after them at, at home. Uh, so those that want to can't afford, and those that can afford don't want to because it's not the done thing to do if you've got money. Uh, this is a family orientated culture. All my staff are family orientated. Their parents all live in the same town, that same area. Uh, they would never leave because they don't leave Chiang Mai because their parents are in Chiang Mai. And now we've even got staff 25, 26 years old. If their mother decides they're not doing this job because they don't like the shifts, believe me, they're not doing the job. Uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, I had a lawyer here, I've got a lawyer here, I used to work for a big international practice in Bangkok. He was 44 with two children. Mm. His mother said, no, time to come back to Chiang Mai, time to come home. So he gives up a job, halves his salary, comes to Chiang Mai. Family here is all important. I suspect it's the same in India. And it's good. Family should, should be all important. Mm. My head nurse loves this job. Mm. Her mother is ill. If her mother gets very ill, she will quit this job and go and look after her mother. It's, there is... No, no. It doesn't matter what I pay her, what I say, mm. she will go and look after her mother. Mm. And most of my staff will be mm. the same. Mm -hmm. It's inbuilt culture. Mm. You yes, look after is. your parents. Yes. Yes. Forget, forget money. Mm. But then most of them aren't married with kids. When you get married with kids, that becomes a more difficult mm. choice. Mm -hmm. Any incident you can uh, you want to share here, whether it was there was a real medical emergency or problem, whether with the persons with dementia or otherwise also? We have lots. I mean, we have guests die here. That's mm -hmm. if you look after elderly people, they're going to die. We end up with it. Mm -hmm. Our guests are all in, all of them have got alarms in the rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, if they pull that alarm, somebody who can give CPR will be there in three minutes. That's our target, three minutes to, three minutes to the room. Everybody can give CPR. Uh, but we have a lot of medical emergencies, uh, a lot of, lot of problems. What you have to remember when you're dealing with people is everybody is different. There is no solution that fits everybody that comes here. Um, some react better, some don't. So, and elderly people, the person that came last year isn't the same person that's here this year. They're a year older, and a year older, mm. as we all start to find out, mm. is changes you. you know? I used to play sport and get a little injury, and two days later it's fine. Now I play sport and get an injury, and I'm four weeks <laughs> with problems. With same, uh, so everybody's changing, everybody's getting older. Uh, but all the time we're focusing on quality of life. Uh, as well as health, but quality of life.
and and you have a very big place here so there's always room to accommodate more people because you may have to take more staff but you have mm, yeah you have event, i suspect in three years we won't be able to accommodate anymore okay and okay. i won't go any bigger mm, mm. because you can't mm. run it the way i want to run it mm. if it's huge mm. yeah mm. i know if one of my guests has a stomach problem this morning uh, mm. i know I, how the new guest is settling in whether it's the one that came last thirty or the one that came this morning I know exactly how that they're, they're doing uh, it's it's a soft to me in a, in a care facility it's a software that's important you can talk about the trees and the gardens and the rooms but it's the care and the philosophy within the care that's important I wanted to know if there are if you have plans or will you inspire others to have more such places I get a number of people talking to me that want to set up partnerships mm. but I don't want to. Mm. Uh, I'm not doing this to make money so that doesn't help me to go and make twice as much as nothing. I don't want to get involved in other places but I will keep talking to people and doing seminars mm. and try to inspire them mm. that if you're going to build a care facility you need to think about the guests and you need to think about the care but believe me 90% of people that want to build a care facility think about selling property or making profit mm. uh, and once you start once you put profit or property sales at the top of your agenda you're not going to run a very good caring facility to me and my staff will tell you always it's about the guests that's our job, look after the guest, mm. make the guest happy. Mm. In Asia there's a big, Asia, big Australian model which is sell property. It's mm. moving into Malaysia, it's moving into China. You build a house that would cost 30,000 and then you call it a care facility and you sell it for 48,000. Um, mm. But you don't, you make sh you make sure there's never enough care there because what, what you actually need to do on the Australian model is for them to move out within 10 years So, because a lot of the times they're selling that house where you only pay half and then when you leave they get more than half mm. of what you sell it for that model only works if people don't stay if they live another 30 years the finances don't work so yeah I mean I'm, I'm going to a seminar in September in Kuala Lumpur and I know I'll, I'll end up arguing with half the people there because they'll keep talking about selling houses. Mm -hmm. um, they're all real estate. They're all real realtors mm -hmm. selling real estate. Mm -hmm. Don't care about care. Mm -hmm. I'm just a freak. That's the way they look at it. Well, you could make more freaks like you. <laughs> you uh -huh. wish that, and it does help talking. And I think it does help. At least somebody might be inspired. What's happening? And I can see it's happening. You can see the elderly growth, it's mm. phenomenal. Yes. In Thailand particularly, it's, over the next 20 years, it's a phenomenal elderly mm. growth in Thailand, mm. coupled in Thailand by a declining working population. So you've got elderly growth mm. and de mm. declining birth rates previously. So you've got this huge market for elderly people. Everybody knows a huge market. Mm. So, oh, that's good, let's get into this business. It's a huge market, it's gonna grow, it's mm. easy. Um, it's a different market mm. and it's not easy mm. uh, and it's certainly not easy to make a lot of money uh, but that's what people do so in Australia they have huge a lot of Australians have huge deposits you pay a phenomenal amount mm. of money to get a place in a care facility mm. and then they take that money and they go and run another business with it or do something else mm. uh, and then if they go bust the money is not there for the people that put the deposit now and the Australian government's had to do a lot of legislation to stop that happening but it's yeah there are a lot of good places about but there are a lot of bad ones about in the west it's not all about chasing money it's, mm. you have to look at the cost of people mm. in Asia you can afford mm. Mm. people uh, in the West you can't can't afford mm -hmm. I couldn't afford 29 nursing staff in UK I mean I just You're right. couldn't mm -hmm. You're right. in India I probably could but mm -hmm. the problem is I suspect the elderly problem in India is so huge where do you start mm -hmm. um, 
And to be honest, I'm not curing the elderly problem in Thailand. Mm. I'm touching the tip of it. I, most Thais can't afford to come here. And if, they could, if I could get the prices low enough to come here, I couldn't do what I do. So where do you go? Right. Uh, Some of the common uh, health problems uh, with, uh, with your guests which you face, I mean, just some say diabetes or high blood pressure or anything which is more common. High blood pressure is the biggest single problem. Mm. It's also the easiest problem. Mm. The, you know, forgive me, I'm not. Mm. <laughs> Most people should not be suffering high blood pressure. Mm. Mm. Control the exercise, control the diet, and you'll mm. get them off the high blood pressure pills. Mm. I'll tell you a story. This is a true story. Mm. My mother, who's nearly 95, got high blood pressure last year. Mm. So I took her to the hospital in Chiang Mai. Mm. And he said, Mr. Brown, the reason your mother's got high blood pressure is because you haven't had her on high blood pressure pills for three years. And I said, the reason I haven't had her on high blood pressure pills for three years is because she hasn't had high blood pressure. And he is a doctor, so he said, no, 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 no. Your mother had high blood pressure every day for three years. And I said, very interesting you should say that. Every morning, every afternoon, my nurse takes my mother's blood pressure and we record it. I've got three years of records of it. And it's not high but you never seen those records never taken a blood pressure no she was on high blood pressure and I'm quite frankly I'm telling you you're wrong and he said what do you call not high blood pressure and I told him and he said that's not high blood pressure I said I know and I've got a nurse doing a blood pressure reading and I take all my guests blood pressures every day I said but now she needs it and that's why I'm here but yeah you cut you change the diet you exercise Exercise is actually one of the biggest benefits for nearly every medical problem you can have, especially for dementia. Uh, but getting elderly people to exercise is not easy. We had a guest come here from the USA with stage 6 Alzheimer's. She hadn't walked for seven months. She hadn't talked for two months. How old was she? mid 80s I think, she's still here, mm. uh, within two months mm. she could walk 200 meters. Once she started walking she started talking mm. and there's no magic formula, no medications, no magic formula, no witch doctor comes in. Basically it's one carer on this arm, one carer on that arm, four days to get her to make one step. Not four days solid but four mm -hmm. days of trying. Right. Once she makes the first step it's the second step, then it's can you get to the bathroom, can you get to the front door, can you get past the terrace, and then she starts enjoying walking and then she walks. Now she'll only walk when she wants to, but she can walk mm. and she, she can certainly talk when she wants to. Uh, her son says she's stubborn and I said no, she's free-willed. <laughs> and when you get to 75 you've got the right to be free willed you've got the right to decide I don't want to go out today mm -hmm. I don't want to talk to you I don't want to do this mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah so, so you have exercise an important part of their uh, routine yes okay. yeah mm -hmm. stretching exercise mm -hmm. Pilates Tai Chi mm -hmm. dance mm -hmm. but just walking if you can just Marion who came here first used to get the golf buggy to breakfast every mm. every morning mm. and then we got her to walk with a carer to breakfast and get the golf buggy back and then she walked to breakfast and walked back, back. Mm. and then she's walking to breakfast on her own and walking back and then she's walking down the road and going to the temple and walking around the fields mm -hmm. on her own yes with a stick mm -hmm. but mm. she's walking mm. uh, and as she walks blood pressure comes down, blood pressure pills go away. So blood pressure is a common problem, diabetes is a problem mm. and it'll be a bigger problem mm. for the next generation because mm. it's mm. much more sugar coming into the mm. diet mm. now. Uh, they're, the, they're the two, but dementia is the biggest problem here because that's why people come here. Mm. It's the disease that relatives want to deal with least. Mm. Uh, Peter, anything else you would like to share? When we set this up, when I couldn't see what I wanted to copy, uh, I couldn't see 
what I would call best practice. Normally when you set up a business, you look around, you mm -hmm. see best practice, you see, can I afford this best practice? Yes, I'll copy it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, every mobile phone looks like a, an apple. I mean, it's, it doesn't, but it's the same concept. I didn't see best practice, so I, I want to set something up with no history, no experience at mm -hmm. all. But to me, experience is overrated anyway. Um, so I decided, okay, if I want to set up a care facility, number one, what would my mother want? Mm. What would she not like? What would she like? And I know what she doesn't like. My mother, because my mother told me, don't ever put me in a nursing home. People go to nursing home to die miserably. If I'm going to die, let me die happily in my own bed. So it couldn't look, smell, or be like a nursing home, and it doesn't. But apart from that I went to boarding school when I was young mm. when I'm old and infirm I don't want to go to a boarding school for the elderly I could not stay in anywhere where somebody says to me this is what you're going to eat this is when you're going to eat it this is when you're going to go to sleep this is what you're going to do I don't care how infirm I'd be out I go and rent an apartment in the city and die I am not going to be a child again uh, so that's why the philosophy is people's independence people's freedom of choice is important and you have to remember that we're dealing with a generation that have gone through a lot I don't know any elderly person that wants care needs it yes want it well there must be some but not I don't know them they need care they don't want it they want to live their life they don't want to be a burden uh, you know, I had to talk my mother into coming in because she doesn't want to be a burden to her, to, to us, to her son. For me, it's I'm doing something I want to do. I had quite a bit of money and a lot of spare time. Now I've got no money and no spare time because all my money is invested. We haven't taken one single bar out of this hotel in nine years. If you make money goes back into the business make money goes back into the business yes the business is worth more but that's irrelevant uh, for me I'm not doing this for to be a saint mm -hmm. I'm doing it because I enjoy doing it it gives me pleasure to do it I not doing it for altruistic reasons mm -hmm. it is I do what I do this job for selfish reasons I enjoy doing it and the fact that it might help people is a benefit and I wouldn't be enjoying it if it wasn't helping people but actually I like working with the elderly and I really believe I believe in people I believe people we write people off children elderly we write them off too quick mm. people can do a lot more if you just give them a bit of support and I don't mean a nanny state where they can get all the money they want by doing nothing you need to support people to do to do things uh, so I believe in people I believe in the elderly I've been pleasantly surprised at what you can achieve by helping people with care how people have improved I've got one gentleman came from the USA he was on 24-hour care for a year 24 hours he's got a carer within a few meters of him and end of last year he moved out into what we call independent living with, with care he has a carer during the day but he lives independently and it's not because his Alzheimer's has got any better mm. it's because he's learned to live with the symptoms of his disease anyway in January he said he didn't like being when he went shopping he didn't like the carers giving him money he wanted to look after his own money now if you know anything about Alzheimer's stage 2 Alzheimer's you lose control of your finances mm. so the textbook says mm. I talked to his son and I said it's a dignity thing it's a mm. so why don't we give him money and let him spend it mm. I'm sure he's going to lose some he's going to spend it on things he doesn't but mm. if he spends two or three thousand a month now and again that he shouldn't be spending it's a low price to pay mm -hmm. for self-respect mm -hmm. so we gave him money 
About two weeks ago, he went shopping with my carer, and she's got money in her pocket, but he's got his own money. And he wanted a pair of sunglasses, and he said to the carer, I've got 3,000 baht, the sunglasses cost 2,800. I ain't going to buy these sunglasses, and I'm not going to go and buy lunch. Now, he could have said to that carer, I'm going to buy these sunglasses, can you give me money for lunch? But when he does that, he's losing control of his money. So he didn't have lunch, he chose the sunglasses. According to all the textbooks, that is impossible. But it, he managed it. So I think we write people off. Yes, they can't do complex financial arrangements, they can't budget, but he did a budget. He went out with 3,000 baht and he made a decision to choose sunglasses. Now, I'm not saying it's the right decision or the wrong decision, it depends how much he likes the sunglasses. He was happy with the sunglasses and happy to skip lunch, so it was the right decision for him. Uh, but for me, I got a big kick out of that, because I wouldn't have believed it. Now I believe it. But I've always believed people can do more than people think. Uh, so, and I've got somebody new here with bad dementia, and I've been talking to the relatives just this morning and saying, they're asking me my view and I say no she's flown here from the UK she's been here four days and she's still got jet lag mm -hmm. and believe me tiredness and dementia don't work well together um, so let me look in two weeks time when she's got through the jet lag got used to the different hours got used to the climate but I said I'm always positive that she'll be able to do more than you think she can do particularly when you get away from the home environment mm -hmm. uh, but people with dementia have to have routine uh, things have to be quite stable. Uh, everybody with dementia hates questions. The reason they hate questions is when you first get dementia, you try to hide it. And so the questions become risk. So my mother, if you said to my mother, is it raining? She might not give you an answer because it's, it's a question, it's, it's a risk. She won't call my wife by her name because she might get it wrong. She call me by my name, but then she's had 66 years to achieve that. So, but when she's in a panic and she wants my wife, she calls her name. Uh, so she knows her name, her brain knows her name, but her brain also says, no, 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 calling people by their name is risky, you might get it wrong. Just say your wife, uh, then I can't get it wrong, uh, or your, your son or your daughter. Uh, so, yeah, people don't, they don't like questions they don't like the routine change they don't like too much excitement my mother think, hates things like birthday parties and mm. things just keep it all nice and calm all nice and flat uh, my mother is relaxed uh, well, how long was she there in the care in the UK? four or five years mm. but she hadn't got dementia at the time mm. 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 but I went to the UK I found my mother dying in a home in a care facility. Dying, I mean, I picked up the phone and called the, amb the ambulance. She spent three months in hospital. So I went to see the care facility. It's an interesting story. Uh, actually, this story actually started this facility. And um, I said, how could my mother be dying in a care facility without you knowing about it? And they said, you don't understand, Mr. Brown. Every morning at eight o'clock, we call your mother and say, how are you, Joyce? And she says, I'm fine, thank you. And I said, you run a care facility for the elderly and you know nothing about them. My mother would say, I'm fine, thank you, until she hasn't got the breath to say, I'm fine, thank you. It's just the way that generation was built. I said, but that doesn't explain something else to me why were the five days of uneaten meals on her dining room table? Didn't that tell you my mother was ill? She said, no, no, you don't understand. The person that delivers the meals is a meal deliverer, mm. not a carer. Mm. So I said, oh, apart from the fact you don't understand the culture of the elderly, you don't have a culture of care in your facility. Because believe me, if one of my housekeepers went into a room and found something wrong, I would expect her to be screaming at my carers or at me to say something's wrong. I wouldn't expect them to ignore it. How can you ignore it? How can you see five days of meals and go and deliver the next one? Uh, if somebody's not eating five days of food, they're ill. It doesn't take a genius to work that out. But it's culture. 
Mm. As far as I'm concerned, we're coming out of that facility and I want you to find somewhere else. Mm. But you can either find really expensive and really posh in the UK or not good enough. They're, they're the two different choices. Mm -hmm. so. And then you opened this? Then we opened this. And then my mother got dementia and mm -hmm. then she came here. You have uh, any other siblings, Peter? Yeah, my sister. Yeah. yeah. She's in the UK. She's in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, did not agree with my mother coming here, mm -hmm. and did not agree my mother had dementia for three months. My sister kept saying she hasn't got dementia. Mm -hmm. Why do you say that? Because mm -hmm. she can remember she's got a hairdressing appointment. I said, yeah, because mm -hmm. she's got a board on her wall and she writes hairdresser mm -hmm. Thursday on the wall. And then they phoned her anyway mm. to say it's your hairdressing appointment because the hairdressing's in the care. So I said it's not hard to remember. Mm. I said, but every time I phone up mm -hmm. and ask her what she's done this week, it's the same story as last week. Mm -hmm. And she says, and I walk down to the beach. Now I know how far the beach is from where my mother stays, and I know how far my mother can walk. And there's something different between those two stories. If you can only walk 20 meters and the, the beach is 600 meters, there's something wrong with that story. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But my sister, who's a very educated mm. person, won't ever, even now, won't mention the D word, mm. won't mention dementia. Uh, I don't ever mention it to my mother either. I say you've got a memory problem. I don't say she's got dementia. Uh, and I've got guests here that say they haven't got dementia, uh, who patently have but we don't put them right. I believe in, I don't lie to people. All my guests and all my carers know I don't lie, but I won't always correct them. If they say, if I say good, good morning and they say, Peter, it's already afternoon, I won't say, no, it's not, it's still morning. I say, well, when he's busy as me, the time flies by um, and, and move on. But if they ask me a, a question, when am I going back to Canada? I will say, you're not going back to Canada till the spring. Well, my son said I'm here for four weeks. No, you're not going back to the spring. Because you get relatives bring people here and say, you're here on holiday, and then they go. Care is a huge problem, and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the solution is going to be build 500 bedroom tower blocks and push them in. Which is not wrong, but you have to find a way to make the 500 bedroom tower blocks work mm. and care. But uh, there's a dementia facility in Canada. I've seen the video. There's a big long corridor, 20 rooms on outside the corridor. For 23 hours a day, they sit in that room. For one hour a day, they sit on a chair outside their front door so they can talk to each other mm. and one nurse sits at the end of the corridor so she can watch them mm. that is not living mm. where's the mental stimulation in that if you do that to somebody their health deteriorates mm. their dementia deteriorates mm. it won't dementia is quite new come 10 years we will be saying what caused dementia and what we should be doing about it and I can almost guarantee what we should be doing about it is going to be heavily diet, exercise and lifestyle orientated as a solution. There may be pills that help uh, eventually, but we haven't found a cure for cancer yet and that's been going a while and had billions spent on it. Dementia is a dead brain cell. If nothing else kills you, dementia will because your brain is dying. And so unless you can regrow those brain cells, nothing's going to cure what you've lost.